and you got a, a big haul. Um, what's it like when you have, when you have go into a, I guess a, a cycle? Is there is every year different in terms of how many you're trying to get, or, or are you just trying to get as many good ones as you can get? Yeah, I mean we want to we want to maximize some positions for sure. We're losing some guys inside, so we want to make an emphasis to grab some guys that can help us and be more versatile. We got some guys that can play guard and tackle. We got some guys that can play center and guard. We got some, so add more versatility. And we also want to add some long athletic bodies. Lucas Simmons and Otto, man, those guys are big, long uh, athletes. You know, we went, we had a little deal with kickball out here. They was going crazy. So I think we got a right mixture of what we needed to enhance the room. We also got a lot of young guys, and I explained to every guy coming in that room, we got some dogs in there. So it's going to be some good competition, but that's going to bring everybody, raise their level, and bring everybody where they need to be to be a really good player for us. Coach Norvell said he was he was happy, I'm sure you guys were, that the young guys didn't seem bothered by the fact you might be bringing in some older guys. No, they absolutely expect to play. So it's not like a deal where it's like, oh, see, that's what most people look at things as replacement. No, they look at it as competitions. We recruit the right guys and the right type of people. So we don't have to worry about that that that, that bug of selfishness. All they worry about is whoever you bring in. Come on, man. the kind of example with Caden Lyles and Maurice Smith last year. Most I told him I said, "Mom, bring in somebody to replace you. You're too small." You know what he said? Bring him. So that's what that's the culture. That's what our, that's, that's our team mentality. That's our old line culture. So I'm excited about it. Chris, or actually Andre, I guess. Um, looks like I mean, he's, we talked to him. He's such a smart kid. Mm -hmm. um, what's he like as a player? I tell you what, his energy. You know, I, I'll, I'll give an example. Uh, I, you know, we were talking on the phone, and they had a hurricane come through Key West, and he sent me a picture of him in a lawn chair with the water about to his feet, and he said, "The only thing I'm disappointed in is that we're not practicing." I don't know how many players at the time. I, I, I wouldn't have been a player to him because if I'd had that time off, I'd have been chilling. But he was disappointed that he wasn't practicing with his team. That's kind of dives into his mentality, how he loves the game. Is that guy a little bit of a diamond in the rough? I mean, he's from a part of the country where it's hard to get to. Um, how did you kind of identify and see him and maybe see how he fits with what you want to do? Well, Odell was down there recruiting with him. Watched, um, we watched film, and he also went against Boots in the spring game. Um, and we, we kind of kind of went from there. He kind of stuck out. And then, you know, so it just kind of went from there. You know, I mean, he went, I wouldn't say Diamond Rubber, I mean, he officially visited. He has places. I mean, he came down to us in Stanford. So, I, like, he was, a, he, was a, he was a good recruit, I think. I just think him being down there, he didn't make that camp circuit. He didn't go to all the, 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 the camps and the notoriety things and all that kind of stuff. He just played ball and, and you know, and, and he, he was at a place where you probably wouldn't want to travel too away from much anyway. He get to hang out on the beach all day. Lucas, you know, when a guy commits early, what's the process like? I mean, are you, how often are you talking to him, talking to him through a season? Like, what's that process like? Yeah, well, I tell him up front, I'm not going to spam him. I'm not one of them coaches that's going to get 100 text messages from you. I'm not going to get 100 calls from you. I'm going to treat you like you're a player here playing for me now. So, Because when they talk to the players, they're going to ask, how much does Coach Jack has talked to you? What has he done for you? How much is he communication? So I'm not going to, I'm not going to fake them. Like, I'll, I give them an example. I get a call every other week about buying a car warranty, but I ain't bought it yet. So spamming my phone doesn't work. So I just said we're going to have a normal working relationship, and we're going to get to know each other, and we'll build from there. Faster these relationships with like a transfer portal offensive lineman. Like it mm -hmm. seems like it's the relationships have to be built very, very fast. So they Absolutely. Want to make a quick decision. Absolutely. So I think that starts with the players. So what happens usually is when a guy goes into the portal, the first person they start contacting is people on the team that they know. And if that information goes from there, then you kind of get a window. It's like, hey, yeah, you want to come check them out? Like so. I mean, like, all those guys started hitting up Rob Scott. They started hitting up all the guys. And they hit up a couple of guys that went in the portal that came here. They, they, like, some guys, we got in the portal that came from places where they didn't even play. And they maximized themselves. So he's like, yeah, man, no, nah, he's going to get you right. So it really starts with the information they get from the players on the team. What, could you talk about each of the transfers um, yeah, yeah. and what they bring? So Jeremiah, number one, he you know, play right tackle. He can play on the edge, good feet, athletic. But also can play inside. We're gonna train to play inside also to get them this kind of versatility, energy, emotion, passion. I mean, he lights up a room, you know. And visiting with him and his mom and little sister, little sister might be in the WNBA one day. She's a hooper, so I'm just excited to kind of bring that kind of energy into the room. Casey Rod is the old man of the group. I mean, experience, started a lot of football games, smart, has played pretty much every position, wants to primarily train at center to play that position. So but he can play tackle, can play guard, you know, right? I mean, 
probably one of the more mature kids that I recruited. Like in our conversations, we probably talked about football maybe 10% of the conversation. It was about maximizing and pushing each other to be even just better than what we are so we can pour back into the young guys. So a little bit more of a leadership mentality, you know. And Keandre is just, man, you want to talk about humble, disciplined. You know, I, I want to bring up a point. He came up on a visit with his mother. And, 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 and you don't see this a lot, but every doorway we walked into, every time he got into a car, he made sure his mom was first. And that little bitty thing told me about his character because he intentionally did all those things. He was a kid that said, Coach, don't worry about me. I've already done my research. I know what I want. So he was a more focused, grown man type of guy. He's a powerful dude, too. So I'm not going to say too many bad things to him at practice because I don't want to put his hands on him. When you, based on the success you guys had, are you having to do less selling now? Or has the program started to sell itself, what you guys do? Yeah, if you talk to any recruiters, they, they tell you I don't do no selling. Zero. So, yeah, I don't do that. So, yeah, that's not it. <laughs> I try to. I tell them I'm trying to scare them away, because the reality of it is, is all that selling goes away now. So now, who you are once that paperwork comes in, it gets real. So if guys have gotten cheated through this process, and I'm not who I was before they signed, they will tell you. And if they ain't told you, then you know it's real. So, I, I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not great at, at selling because, I, man, I don't like to get hustled myself. So I, I read into that stuff too. I imagine the process of like talked to Mike about it earlier. Like, uh, roster management, you know, kind of like balance, scholarships, that kind of stuff. Be difficult for you guys on the offensive line. You have outgoing players. How did you decide who you want to add several transfers to maybe come in and, and beat things up immediately? Well, not really. It's not. It's not in the process of transfer versus high school. Player. That's kind of not what it is. It's more of who's the, what is what is the fit and what is the need we address and, and what is needed in the moment. Is that, I don't know if that kind of answers the question, but we didn't say, hey, we need this many high school kids and this many transfer guys. Because, you know, it's more of what is the need we have in the room, who's leaving, and who can we bring into our room if it is an older guy who can pour into our young guys. So if you ask them, when y'all talk to these the, the transfers that's coming in, the first thing I tell them is, I don't want somebody in my room that's not going to mentor the young guys and give them some perspective on what it is to be at another place. Because all they know is us. So you will be able to tell them, no, Coach Atkins does a good job with this, or no, I learned this better here, so they can have some competitive knowledge. Like, they can say, all right, now you got somebody in the room that can be in, tell you, I mean, like, they've been through off season, so it takes a little bit of shock off of them. So I'm trying to build more older guys that fit us and what we're looking forward to pour into the young guys. With, um, uh, Keandre, did he? I mean, it seemed like looking. You know, I didn't see his film. But pro football number, pro football focus numbers okay. two years ago seemed to be very impressive. Like how, when he was starting, how, how well did he play? Well, Keandre is. I mean, he's a big, massive guard. You know, I, I don't look at the pro football focus numbers. I just kind of looked at what he can provide and what helps. And every clip I saw, no matter if it was good or bad, he never went backwards. So it would be a stalemate if he's going forward, and I need that when you get those big body nose guards and D tackles that we're going to face next year. So with Brock Glenn, I mean, Chris Brown said he wanted y'all to respect his commitment to Ohio State. Absolutely. To still say that you guys are here for him if he changes his mind. So I guess what, what Glenn did to commit to y'all and then – what does he bring to this offense? So one thing about it is he handled himself like you know grown man business. So he was very honest and open of what he wanted to see and what his issues were were with us. And he said if we get these issues corrected or he sees what he needs to see, it will be an open recruitment. So I appreciate that because he gave us the information, he gave us the blueprint, what he wanted, and we were able to, and we told him, okay, this is what we're looking for in a quarterback. This is what we need from you, and if this happens, this is what we need you to do. So it became that that trust and that partnership from the from the beginning, even before like before he committed to Ohio State, he already had a plan of what he wanted to see from Florida State, and I'm glad it worked out for him because for him because so many times in this process, other factors kind of affect the recruit's decision. And I hate when kids don't get to go where they really wanted to go on situations. So, because at the end, when you're 40 years old, you're gonna have to pull up your, your your YouTube clips and all that kind of stuff and your accolades, and you wanted to be in the jersey you wanted to wear. So, I, I credit to him because he knew where he wanted to go, he knew what he wanted to do, and he didn't let any situation take him away from where he wanted to go play football.